All right guys, this is gonna be a quick video involving the flyweight on a Briggs & Stratton camshaft. What I'm working on, the, well, I can show you. So this is the oil slinger that is not on it anymore and bent. That's what a normal one looks like. There's a flyweight and that's just a piece of it. There is a flyweight that is on, that sits on the, I guess on the top of the camshaft because this is, that's the top of the engine. So there's a flyweight that sits on there and there's a decompression valve on there when it turns around, the centrifugal force of that, that flyweight opens up and it helps, uh, it helps the engine, you know, it helps the camshaft spin over so that way it turns past that decompression valve. And I, um, I'll put a screenshot up on the link. This is from Briggs & Stratton website. This is Briggs & Stratton claiming that the engine won't get past the compression stroke. Now, I will disclaim this that I'm working on, I have both ways to start this. I have electric start and I have recoil start. So there is, you know, I do have the ability to recoil start it, but there is also a starter on the engine. So what I wanna do right now, and this is probably not smart and I'm just some, you know, novice dummy trying to take down some multi-million dollar company's claim. I don't wanna order the part, the new camshaft I think is like 60 bucks. I just wanna reassemble it without that flyweight and I wanna see what happens. They claim that it can't get past the compression stroke. We'll see if that's the case. If it is, I will stand corrected. If not, you know, I'm sure it might have long-term issues or maybe it won't, I, I don't really know. But um, I do wanna to try to defy this design and just reassemble it with this camshaft. All, all it was, there was a, there's a spring, there's the, um, I don't know what this is, some kind of a, a splined post. And then there's the actual fly weight that, um, that opens when the camshaft starts to spin. So and it sits right up there on the shaft of the camshaft. So we're just gonna reassemble this. I'm just gonna put it back together, get the engine back on the unit, which is one of these Forrest Gump rear engine riding lawnmowers. And I'll give you guys an idea of what they're claiming versus what you can actually do if you don't wanna replace the part. Again, I know I'm probably gonna get hate in the comments for this. That's fine, I can take it. I just, um, I'm not, I guess this all has to do with, I'm just not a huge Briggs fan to begin with. So this is just me, you know, trying to give the middle finger to Briggs saying, hey, screw you, screw your design, and <laughs> we'll see what happens. And if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. All right guys, so it is the next day. Everything's put back together. I'm gonna get the garage door opened up, and uh, we'll fire it up and kind of debunk this myth. Again, I know there's probably long-term effects from this that I'm not paying attention to, or maybe there's not. You know, the only time will tell, but I'm gonna electric start first and then I'll recoil start second and uh, we'll get an idea if, if it even spins over. That claim that I saw that I posted earlier, it said it won't get past the compression stroke. I don't know if they meant it won't get past the compression stroke easily or if they meant like it'll never get past the compression stroke just because there'll be too much compression. I don't know, let's get this thing fired up.
All right guys, there you have it. Is it debunked? Maybe. The only reason why I made this video is because I wasn't able to find this answer out myself. So this is half of an experiment, half a defiance effort. So, you know, Briggs & Stratton, multi-million dollar organization, me, just some random kid in a garage somewhere, not claiming to be better than them. I just wanted to help you or anybody out there watching. You could be able to, you know, put it back together with the confidence of knowing that it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Again, long term, is it a big deal? Probably, you know, I'm, I'm gonna put up a short little clip right now too of me trying to start it after I turn the camera off. And there are a couple times when you get that perfect storm, when it gets that compression stroke and you go to pull it over, it kind of like, Gah! it really struggles. The mower kind of came up a little bit. That's kind of normal on most all pull starts when you get on that compression stroke that just probably didn't help it at all so thanks for hanging out guys you know if you want to check out the channel we have a bunch more other videos on you know bringing stuff back to life will it run really appreciate it. you guys want to check it out let me know in the comments if you have any questions dm me on facebook instagram snapchat twitter whatever you got say hello really appreciate you guys hanging out with me all right take care guys peace